All right, guys, so uh, we are into the second part of the video on uh, Atwood machines and systems of forces and now inclined. So I'm going to start this video by finishing up uh, the last problem from the um, Atwood section. So uh, this one's a little bit different. I've drawn on it already, but it says a 75 kilogram crate is on a table, which has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.68. A uh, cord that's attached to the string uh, or catch the crate and then hung over a pulley uh, and connected to another crate that has a mass of 200. So I called the 75 kilogram one A and the 200 kilogram crate B. We're supposed to find the acceleration of uh, the system or each block because they accelerate the same <clears throat> and the tension in the rope. So uh, we're approaching it the same way as we did last time with Atwood machines. So we're going to select the whole system, which is the pulley, the string, the Atwoods, uh, or the blocks, and, and the table is outside of our system. So um, we pick a direction that it's going to move. The It's never going to move like to the left. The block A is never going to start moving by itself to the left. So uh, it's going to be falling down to the right. B is going to fall down and A is going to move to the right. So that's the positive direction. Uh, if I think about the forces that are external to our system, um, we have the gravity force on both of them. So gravity on B, gravity on A. We have the normal force from the table pushing up on A. And then we have the friction force um, acting uh, on A, and uh, I forgot a little negative sign, but I'm going to make that negative because that friction is going opposite to the way that it's going to move, and um, the gravity force is in, of B is in the positive direction. Um, the up and down forces on block A, like from the table and the force of gravity, they're balancing each other out, so they're they're canceling each other out. We're actually going to need to know them because we have friction and we need normal force for friction, so uh, that is going to be part of our situation. So uh, the first thing I did was kind of go through and figure out what these force values were. So um, the first thing I solved for was the force of gravity of B. So that's the mass of B times the acceleration of gravity. So 200 times 9.8 gets you 1960. So that one's 1960. I did the same thing for the gravity of A, uh, just with the mass of A instead of the mass of B. So it would be 75 times 9.8, and that's only 735. And then um, I used some common sense and said, OK, the normal force on A is equal to the gravity of A. We just talked about they're balancing out because it's not accelerating up or down. So the, the normal force of A is 735 as well. And then now I can solve for the friction of A. Uh, using the fun equation, so the coefficient, which is 0.68 times the normal force of A is 735, and multiply those out, and you get approximately 500. I rounded a little bit, but that's fine. So I have all the values, and now I just have to kind of set up my uh, equation um, for the system. So the things that are um, working on the acceleration would be the gravity of B and the force of friction on A. So those are my forces. So the, the sum of the forces that are causing it to accelerate are the gravity of B, which was positive, and I'm going to add uh, the friction force of A, which is negative. It's going the opposite way. And then that's, that's equal to the total mass times the acceleration. So we're, we're doing the part where we're solving for the acceleration first. I have all those numbers over here, so I can plug them in. So 1960 was the gravity. Uh, 500 was the friction. The difference in those is equal to 275A. We're going to solve uh, for A. And you should get uh, 5.31 uh, meters per second squared, and it's going in that positive direction. So that works out. That's a value that's acceptable for a possible answer. Um, the next part is to solve for uh, the tension in the rope. So we could pick either block and solve for the tension. Block B is much simpler than block A. Block A has four forces acting on it. Block B only has two. So I usually pick the one that has less. So I drew the picture over here for uh, block B. So we got gravity pulling down. We got the tension trying to hold it up. The block B is going to fall down, so down is positive, so gravity is positive, tension is negative. Again, you basically just put a plus sign between those, and that's your formula. So uh, the sum of the forces on B is the gravity of B, which is positive, plus a negative tension, uh, should equal the mass of B times that acceleration that we just got. So again, we know a lot of these numbers. We just got to plug in and solve for FT. So when we do that, you get 1960 is the gravity of B. Uh, tension is what we're looking for, and then 200 times 5.31. When you multiply that, you get uh, 1060. Two for that um, net force, and the difference in those two will get you the tension, and that's 898 newtons. So that is um, another type of Atwood machine. This one's on a surface, but same same ideas, same concepts. It's just you are um, working through a system uh, approach. So that was kind of just a reviewing or going back to the last video. Um, so now we're going to get into the um, last part of this week's lesson, which is on inclines. So inclines are a little bit different. Um, it's still kind of using um, the same approach of like figuring out the free body diagram and the force, um, but there is some subtle differences in this. And if you know those differences, it's not so bad. So I'm just going to go through it in this video and talk through um, this example problem and one more 
uh, example before we go. So, um, so up to this point, we've always dealt with like flat surfaces. Um, so we didn't have anything that was on an incline like this. So this this is a block and it's on an incline. And I have these motion little arrows that uh, go along with this picture. So it says uh, a 10 kilogram box is going to slide down a 30 degree incline. Um, what that means is the 30 degrees is here. So the 30 degrees um, is the uh, angle that the incline is making with the horizontal. Um, and it says the coefficient of kinetic friction uh, is 0.34. So that's U. And um, we're trying to find out what are the forces acting on the box. We want to label them, find their magnitudes, so find their sizes, um, figure out the net force acting on the box, and then finally the net acceleration. So we're trying to figure out what's the acceleration of this block as it slides down the ramp. Um, we're using basically the same process um, that we did before. So it's just the only thing that's different is you're going to pick a coordinate system that simplifies our situation. So what I mean by that is typically when we do our, um, our situations, we, we say up and down is the y direction and then left or right would be the x direction so x and y's so uh, in this case that is not really the most useful way to describe this because um, it basically makes our forces not line up with axes so if we think about the forces acting on this um, box we got gravity uh, going straight down um, i would say there is a uh, normal force which is from the surface so it's like parallel to the surface so the surface is kind of uh, that would force would be pushing kind of up and to the right. That would be the normal force. And then friction would be acting because it says there's a coefficient of friction. And friction is parallel to the surface, so it's going to go kind of up the ramp like that. So those forces, the the forces that we have there, they're not lined up with an X or a Y. So there's a lot of trigonometry that you would have to do uh, to make that work. So in order to make it uh, easier, what we're going to do is we're going to take our vertical axes where it's like, uh, our horizontal and vertical x and y axes that normally look like that. And we are going to rotate them or tilt them so that the y axis is um, perpendicular to the surface. So that's going to be our new y axis. And our x axis is going to be parallel to the surface. So basically, you're just uh, tilting um, or rotating those axes um, by a little bit. And what happens with that is it lines up more forces. So that's going to make the situation easier. We're going to fill out our table like we normally would. And then the only thing that's not on an X or Y axis, because what happens is friction is going to go along the negative X. Normal force is going to go along the positive Y. And now gravity is sort of the odd force out where it is in multiple directions. So this is if this is force of gravity going straight down, um, then uh, it is at some angle off of that. So it's going multiple directions. So we have to find um, the components of gravity. And uh, we would do this using these two um, calculations. So the gravity in the X is going to be mg sine of theta, where theta is the angle of the incline. And uh, fgy, or the gravity in the y direction, is mg cosine theta. That is not the typical way that we would do it. Usually when we find x and y, x goes with cosine and y goes with sine. But because this is a special case, it kind of the angle is now at a vertical place. So it's, it's different, OK? So just trust me, that's the way it works. Uh, and you want to do that when you get to this part on your problems. And then after you get through that step, it's just solving like you normally uh, would and going in through the chart and figuring stuff out. So let's try one. And this is the same problem. So um, it says, again, a 10 kilogram box. So that 10 kilograms, that's the mass. I'm going to write M is equal to 10 up here. 10 kilograms. Uh, is traveling down a ramp. The ramp is 30 degrees. So I'll put that here. 30 degrees. Um, uh, coefficient of friction, U is 0.34. So let's draw the free body diagram. I'm going to try to do this uh, carefully. But before we do that even, I want to draw in my new axes. So my new axes look like that. So the x direction, the positive x is down the ramp. And the positive y is uh, perpendicular to the ramp. All right, so x and y axes are always 90 degrees to another. So if this dot represents my um, forces, um, I have gravity. Gravity goes straight down. So that's one. Uh, we're going to do an activity in class where you're going to look at this. Um, so you might see it a little bit easier in that picture. Uh, I need a normal force, which is perpendicular to the ramp. So that's kind of that way. Uh, that's Fn. And then the friction is going uh, parallel and up the ramp. So like that. And that's F, F and it's 
technically kinetic friction, but we'll just say force friction. That's okay. So I got my picture with these ideas. And um, the one that's, again, the oddball is gravity. So gravity is in multiple directions. It's in uh, the y direction and the x direction. So if those dotted lines represent the axes that mirror this, um, it's in two directions. So let's go ahead and, and kind of label these things. So if you look at gravity, gravity, um, the part of gravity going in the x direction is going um, to the right. So I would say uh, it's going this way. That's the gravity in the x. So that's going to be positive. And the gravity in the y is pulling into the ramp. Into the ramp is the uh, negative direction. So that's a negative force there. So we are just doing positive negatives and zeros, and that's positive in the x and negative in the y. The other ones are easier because they just line up. So uh, the normal force goes in the positive y, so it's zero in the x, and it's going off the surface of the ramp, so that's positive in the y. Friction is going up the ramp. In this case, that's negative, and it's not going up or down off the ramp, so that's zero. Um, the whole box or system, it slides kind of along the x-axis, so it's not accelerating in the y. So that's going to be zero, and this should be positive because it's going to slide down the ramp. Friction isn't going to start making it move up the ramp. So gravity in the X should be bigger than the friction force. Okay. So um, we filled in the positive, negative, and zeros. This is very standard. So once you have one of these down, it's kind of the same chart. It's kind of the same picture. Um, you just have to like look at the situation and, and be able to apply it. So for the gravity in the X, we're going to use mg sine theta. So it would be 10 times 9.8 times the sine of the 30 degrees. Uh, if you do that in your calculator, uh, 10 times 9.8 times the sine of 30, that is 49. That's what it turns out to be. So 49 I can put in this box. And I already have it as positive because it's going uh, in the positive direction down the ramp. Um, gravity in the y is going to be 10 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30. Um, I'm going to round this a little bit just to make the math a little bit easier. Uh, I think uh, you should get something close to 85. I think it was like 84.9. We're just going to round it to 85 to make the math a little easier to deal with uh, in the video. And that's fine. Not a big deal. Okay. So we filled those things out. Um, we need to find the normal force, but there's no equation for normal force. So you got to look at the chart. So again, it's balanced, we said. So when we add these up, we should get zero. So negative 85 plus some number plus zero gets me... Uh, zero. So this box here, we can fill out and it would be 85. So 85 is the normal force. Um, the friction box is an equation, so we can figure that out too. So the force of friction uh, is equal to mu times the normal force, or Fn. And we just got Fn, so now we can do this part. So that's why we had to figure out that, that box first in red. So if we do 0.34 uh, times 85, that would be um, the friction force. And if you do that, uh, you get something, I think it's like 28.9, but again, I'm just going to round it to 29 to a whole number. So 29 newtons. These are all newtons for all these forces. So that's going to be 29 here. And then it's just, again, adding the columns. So 49 uh, in the positive direction plus a negative 29 in that tug of war, you win by 20 going down the ramp. And uh, that's our net force. And now we just have to solve for our acceleration. So we can use the net force equals the mass times acceleration. So it would be 20 equals 10A. And that turns out to be a fairly simple number. So A turns out to be uh, 2 meters per second squared. It's positive. What does positive mean? Uh, it means it's going down the ramp. It's going in the positive x direction. So you could write out down the ramp, or you should just understand that that's the way that it's moving. So um, that is the example problem. We'll do another one, and you'll see that like it really doesn't change very much. Uh, it might ask or give you different values or ask for different uh, ideas at the end, but it doesn't really change um, the way that you go about it. Okay. So. Um, so this one reads, um, a 3.5 kilogram object is on a 25 degree incline. Uh, if the force of kinetic friction acting uh, up the incline is 8 newtons, uh, draw a free body diagram of the situation, calculate the acceleration of the object, and then calculate the coefficient of friction. So um, I drew the picture again. It's, it's essentially the same thing. Oops, sorry, I drew that dotted line there wrong. So the dotted uh, axes represent these axes. So the normal force 
kind of is uh, along the y-axis and the friction is on the x. So again, gravity is in multiple directions and you got to figure it out. So it's mg sine theta and mg cosine theta. Using those numbers, it'd be 3.5 times 9.8 times the sine of 25. You get 14.5 for that one. For the y, you get negative 31.1. Normal force is not going in the x. And this one tells you it's 8 newtons going up the incline. So that's a negative 8 because it's going up incline and that's in the negative x direction. It's not going in the y so that's zero. So um, we already have these two numbers 14.5 and negative 8 so I can add and I can get the net force is 6.5 newtons. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, for the uh, y direction we have negative 31.1 for the force of gravity in the y and nothing is the friction doesn't go in the y direction and the net force in the y is zero so this has to balance out so it makes sense that this would be a positive 31.1 so again that highlighted one is the one that was just empty to start so that's why i highlighted to say oh we have to fill that in and it just has to balance out so um, from there um, we can solve for the net force so again net force is just mass times acceleration um, the net force was 6.5, the mass was 3.5, you're solving for A, divide through, you get 1.86 meters per second squared going down the ramp again. Um, again, sort of like Atwood machines, there's a limit to the maximum acceleration that you can experience on a ramp. Um, with just like under the influence of gravity, you don't have like an engine pushing you down, you're not like pushing on your gas as you're going down a hill. So like um, the, the fastest something would uh, be accelerating would be in free fall, so 9.8 is sort of the meters per second squared, that's the acceleration limit that you would have in this case, or any incline. And that would be a vertical incline. Um, so uh, the coefficient of friction, you solve that using the fun equation. So uh, force of friction is equal to U times Fn. We know the friction force is 8. We know the normal force is 31.1. We plug into them and solve, and you should get 0.257. So uh, I went through that pretty quick, but it's 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 really very repetitive once you have the process down once you have that um, idea down. So we're going to do more of this in class, um, or we are going to do this in class, and then you're going to watch this later, and hopefully it'll make more sense. But um, hopefully this is not so bad as well either. So um, have a great day, be well, and I will see you later.